in this lecture we would start with the fundamentals of climatology and the composition of atmosphere now there are two terms where people are usually confused about one is weather and another is climate when we try to understand climatology we are mainly focusing on the climate of the region now what is the difference between weather and climate they appear very similar but there is a huge difference between the two weather is a kind of day to day variation in the temperature pressure humidity or any other atmospheric phenomena so when i say it is a kind of day to day phenomena or day to day changes it is short term in nature on the other hand when i talk about climate climate is something when we talk about in long term so first of all it's long term averaged at a yearly average of say 30 years or more along with the statistical calculations done for various uh, weather phenomena like climate temperature rainfall uh, sorry rainfall temperature wind patterns and so on so if i say mean monthly temperature or mean monthly rainfall uh, highest or lowest average temperatures these would be kind of climatic phenomena because we are considering the mean monthly temperature or mean monthly rainfall for a period of a uh, complete month and then i am saying the highest or the lowest average temperature compared to the previous year or the subsequent years what it should be kind of predictions but those are all again based on the climate so in very simple terms if i want to explain climate and weather i can say weather is something what you get however climate is something what you expect so i expect the climate to be good this year before rain and not very hot so that is what is my expectation but what is today is what i am getting and that is weather so that is the basic difference between weather and climate the study of weather is known as meteorology the study of climate is known as climatology so climatology not only includes the temperature rainfall uh, wind patterns but also uh, seasonal changes in phenomena or seasonal patterns like la nino la nina el nino so these are some of the seasonal patterns that are also included in the study of climatology it also talks about extreme weather changes in contrast to uh, the weather so climate is a kind of more comprehensive evolution of something as compared to weather now we have understood what is climate and what is weather we have understood the fundamental behind climatology we'll be covering all these in further lessons where we would be talking about all these phenomena in detail now the main topic for today is composition of atmosphere composition of atmosphere if you would go through most of the references you would find a list of gases and the percentage but that is not exactly what we need to understand today what we need to understand is uh, we'll start with the historical backdrop we'll understand the types of gases the proportion of these gases in the atmosphere and um, the importance of each and every gas now if i start with the historical background or the historical backdrop i say around 4.6 billion years ago on atmosphere on earth there was atmosphere and that atmosphere mainly was composed of nitrogen and carbon dioxide around 2 billion years ago oxygen started to evolve and this oxygen started its evolution by the photosynthesizing bacteria that evolved on earth and these photosynthesizing bacteria slowly uh, helped the evolution of oxygen and this oxygen gradually replaced carbon dioxide and i can say from 0% of oxygen 
that was available around 4.6 billion years ago this increased to 21 percent of oxygen so this is how the present day earth i can say is mainly composed of nitrogen and oxygen and not carbon dioxide now let's come further closer in terms of time i would say the period of greeks greeks demarcated four elements that are essential for survival of life and these four elements were earth fire water and lastly air and because of that there were further researches on air its composition its variation the regional variation and the uh, temporal variation in the atmospheric conditions now greeks focused on these four elements for their study later on there was research done in 1800 by john dalton and he tried to explain the role of some of the gases as most important gases for formation of atmosphere according to him atmosphere was confined on the lower layers of the earth and the predominant gases that he explained were nitrogen oxygen and argon and he said argon is a kind of gas which was important for the process of combustion however it was only after 1920s that a spectrometer was discovered and with these spectrometers trace gases were discovered so the presence of trace gases in the atmosphere was discovered only after the invention of a spectrometer and therefore they discovered gases that were found in a small concentration in the atmosphere like ozone then i could say carbon dioxide methane were some of the gases that were discovered after the invention of a spectroscope now we can classify gases into two basic types constant gases and variable gases when i say constant gas gases they remain same over time and location so i i am taking two phenomena here one is temporal that governs the time period and another is spatial that governs the location on the map i could say so the temporal and spatial phenomena constant gases remain the same over time and location while variable gases vary over time and location in very simple terms now let's understand some of the constant gases and some of the variable gases the major constant gases are nitrogen oxygen argon so these are the three primary constant gases besides this in trace elements you have Nitro, uh, neon, helium and krypton. The percentage of these gases in atmosphere remain constant. Nitrogen around 78%, oxygen around 21%, argon is a kind of trace gas with around <coughs> 0.93% and neon, helium and krypton with the proportion of 0.0001%. So very trace amount of neon helium and krypton however there are gases which are variable in the atmosphere like water vapor then you have carbon dioxide methane nitrogen nitrogen dioxide nitrous oxide so all forms of nitrogen and oxygen then you have ozone sulfur dioxide so these are some of the gases of these i could say all these gases appear in trace amounts and vary from region to region on the other hand i can say water vapor ranges from 0 to 4 percent based on the location it is in and then you have carbon dioxide that vary uh, that is around 0.038 percent in the atmosphere however it's important to note like let's take 
uh, water vapor here. So water vapor would be abundant in the regions which are close to ocean or I could say the tropical rainforests, tropical oceans. So everything close to equator would have higher concentration of water vapor as compared to the polar areas. So this water vapor or amount of water vapor varies significantly first of all. Now the next important thing is these gases, these variable gases constitute merely 1%. So if I contribute nitrogen and oxygen alone, they contribute to nearly 99%, 98 point something or I could say 99% of the atmospheric gases. However, there is one very important question. How can we know or what could be the impact of variable gases or the constant gases and is the impact of variable gases more than the constant gases? Now if I try to answer this question, I can say that variable gases contribute only 1% while constant gases contribute around 99%. 99% of the students would say that constant gas has more impact on atmospheric processes as compared to variable gas but that answer would be incorrect. The correct answer I would say would be the impact of variable gas is much higher in contrast to the constant gas. The reason being variable gas is mainly composed of gases which are greenhouse gases. Now these greenhouse gas have a unique role of keeping the atmosphere warm. If there were no greenhouse gases, the temperature of present day earth would be 30 degrees Celsius lesser than today and I would say it would be a cold planet like mercury or something else. So these greenhouse gases are the only gases that help atmosphere maintain the warmth. The, the role of greenhouse gas is to trap the incoming long wave radiations that come in and allow the short wave radiations. So this energy trap or I could say heat trap is used to is used as heat energy to heat the atmosphere and therefore these variable gases play a very important role in atmosphere as most of the variable gases are greenhouse gases by nature. Now again these greenhouse gases if they are present in adequate amount they are useful to the atmosphere however if they are present in excess amount they are harmful to the atmosphere because these greenhouse gases if present in excess would lead to global warming and this global warming can in other terms lead to depletion of ozone layer. So I could say creation of ozone hole or depletion of ozone layer would be a major drawback because of the excess of these greenhouse, effect, uh, the, these greenhouse gases. Besides the variable gases that we have talked, there are particulate matter that is also present in the atmosphere. Now these particulate matter occur in the form of volcanic ashes, rain particles, snow and there is an inter interesting case that Mount Pintabo is a unique study where this volcanic ash that was a particul particulate matter remained in the atmosphere for more than one year. Now if I talk about the composition you can see this diagram. So you have this pie chart shows maximum amount of nitrogen among the constant gases and then you have oxygen that contributes around 21% argon and this trace element is just 0.1%. And now let's consider this trace element to be 100% and of this 100% most of it would be carbon dioxide then you have neon, helium, methane, nitro, uh, nitrous oxide and ozone as other trace gases. If I try to 
uh, demarcate the gases and with their chemical formula and percentage these would be the list of 12 uh, top 11 gases in the atmosphere the gases marked with a star are present in variable amount now if i talk about the major uh, role of these gases nitrogen is used to prevent burning uh, or rapid burning and it's a building block for proteins or I could say this helps in formation of protein in human body and animals as well. Now nitrogen is fixed in the atmosphere by nitrogen fixing bacteria and by the lightning process that occurs during the rainfall. However, uh, with the decomposition there is denitrifying bacteria that play an equally important role. Then oxygen, oxygen plays a role both in photosynthesis and respiration. So plants consume Plants consume carbon dioxide and water and provide the output in the form of glucose and oxygen. So this free oxygen is used by the animals for the process of respiration and they again throw out carbon dioxide which is used by green plants and these green plants again convert those into free oxygen so that's the basic role for oxygen then you have presence of water as said previously uh, it helps in maximum uh, redistribution of energy by means of latent energy or latent heat source and mainly the tropical areas you have excessive uh, amount of water vapors that is found as compared to the uh, there's polar areas then you have argon, argon is mainly used in light bulbs, carbon dioxide, the percentage of carbon dioxide has increased by around 35% in last 300 years and that's due to, mainly due to the global warming or increase in the uh, exhaust from vehicles, burning of fossil fuels, combustion, uh, deforestation would be some of the major reasons for this. Then you have nitrous oxide as another important gas usually found in rice fields or rice cultivation you have fossil fuel burning then you have eutrophication biomass burning so these are some of the reasons because of which you have presence of these gases in the atmosphere now lastly you have ozone ozone is a major um, gas that prevents ultraviolet rays to penetrate into the earth but this ozone is use, useful only if it is found in the stratosphere or the upper layers we would be talking about the layers of atmosphere in the next class where we will understand the various layers uh, for now stratosphere is the layer about the troposphere and if ozone is present in the stratosphere that is 15 to 55 kilometers it is useful for us because it prevents the excessive ultraviolet rays from penetrating into the earth however if it is present in lower layers or uh, i could say troposphere it acts mainly as a pollutant uh, it is also a result of or i could say byproduct of the photochemical smog that is found mainly around the cities so photochemical smog is the major reason for the presence of ozone in the uh, regions around city or in the lower layers of atmosphere so with this we cover the various uh, gases that are present in the atmosphere or i could say the composition of atmosphere we would be covering uh, the various layers of atmosphere like troposphere stratosphere ionosphere and so on in the further classes and we'll be covering more topics on climatology in the further sessions you can subscribe to our channel for any further updates till then have a good day ahead